this is the most important thing you need to understand. Bharat, as you know or you do not know, how do we just burn out this Hindu way of life, Hindu? I belong to one religion, so you must belong to another religion, how else? Because you do something different. So, you will see phenomenal temples here, you don't see that in the north because they were all largely destroyed. It has not been written enough in the history books. But after the invasion that happened, everything is completely wiped out. Yes. Uh, India also faced, uh, you know, invasions and colonization, but here it's still alive, uh, more actively it's still alive. So, how did it manage to survive here? Like, uh, what's the one thing that… Yeah, because you're still about? wearing a sari, <laughs> that's how it survived. Yes. <laughs> what's the thing that kept this culture alive for mm -hmm. thousands of years? Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> See, uh, innovation is just a simple word, but when you experience it, the brutality of it is another thing. Yes. What happens in those times are unspeakable stuff, yes, really. especially to women. Men get killed, they're fortunate in many ways. They get tortured sometimes, that's a little unfortunate. But generally, women get to live and they'll be tortured for the rest of their life, usually. So, invasion is not just a simple word. Yes. There are two ways of taking people and property on the world itself. One is by invasion, another is by inclusion. Exactly. If you take something by inclusion, it becomes beautiful, isn't it? If you take something by invasion, it is the ugliest unspeakable thing that you can think of. Whether it's on the level of an individual or a nation or a culture or a civilization, so, what is it that made this culture survive through nearly a thousand years of <laughs> brutal invasions? Brutal. Very brutal. Yeah. Uh, it has not been written enough in the history books, but very brutal invasions. So, uh, what is it? One thing was the people who invaded powered by the force of their religion or by their economic interests. One thing was the culture and the civilization was so complex and profound, they could not figure it out. See, <laughs> uh, I forget the name of this particular invader. Sometime, no, no, I'm, I'm thinking of a particular name. I'm not good at these names anyway. <laughs> so one of them had a real discussion with the people and said, how do we just burn out this Hindu way of life, Hindu thing? Because <laughs> they, they thought it's another religion. Yes. Just like they believe in one religion, somebody else believes in another religion. That's because I belong to one religion, so you must belong to another religion. How else? Because you do something different. But that's what they never figured out. So they looked at this and where is the religious head? Who is the Pope? Let's kill him. That's the idea. So they said, no, there are hundreds of them. So they killed all the hundreds. But still it didn't die. Because there was never a leadership for this. It was never yes. an organized approach. It's every individual seeking their own thing. And everybody accepting that, that was the only organization we had. <laughs> you're… you're worshipping the tree, I'm okay with that. She's worshipping the rock, I'm okay with that. I'm not a tree worshipper, I'm not a rock worshipper, but I got no problem. I'm a sky worshipper. Somebody else worship… doesn't worship anything, oh, we are okay with him also. So they never figured this, yes. because they always believed you must belong to some entity. 
Here people did not belong to any entity, so there was no leadership. As many people as you want, you kill, but still it is on. In every home, in, in, in human hearts, what is on, you can't kill it, all right? He did not need leadership, he did not need a book, he did not need an ideology, he did not need a god, that's the most important thing. So they went about demolishing temples systematically all across northern India. Southern India, you come and see glorious temples are still here because they didn't come this far down. So you will see phenomenal temples here, you don't see that in the north because they were all largely destroyed. Yes. So even if you kill the god, these people won't give it up. You destroy the temple, they got their own little god in their home, they will worship there only. You destroy their home, they're carrying it on their body and they'll worship here only, Atma Linga they got. Yes. What do you do with this fish? <laughs> so, because this is the most important thing you need to understand. India is… Bharat, as you know or you do not know, is an organized chaos. Yes. <laughs> People don't understand this. So if you look at India, it looks like it's going nowhere. Because we are not like an arrow. Hmm. Arrows will fly for some time and go down. We are like a swarm of bees. <laughs> Every bee seems to be going in a different direction, but in the end all of them go in the same direction. Yes. It's happening. Very effectively. <laughs> Namaskaram. The resilience of Indian culture is attributed to the people's strong attachment to the traditions. Symbolized by the continued use of traditions attire like the sari. Invasion is not just a word, but a brutal experience. Especially for women who often face unspeakable atrocities and torture. The survival of Indian culture of thousands of years is a testament to the resilience and perseverance of its people in the face of adversity. Today, we are delving into a pivotal era in Indian history, the impact of Muslim rule. Let's explore the timeline of events that shaped India during this period. Early Muslim incursions 715 CE to 1020 CE India's sovereignty faced its first challenge with the Muslim invasions, starting in Sindh. In 715 CE, the Arabs' limited success in the kingdom of Raja Dabir was met with a resistance from rulers like Raja Bhoja and the Gujarat kings. Maintaining sovereignty for nearly 300 years, the era highlights not just the clash of civilization, but also the resilience of local powers in defending their territories. Establishment of Muslim rule 1020 CE to 1328 CE The Ghurid dynasty invasions from 1191 CE to 1255 CE marked a significant expansion of Muslim rule into northern India. Muhammad Shabuddin Ghori's conquest extended Muslims' occupation to Delhi, East Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Bengal. The period also witnessed a significant cultural exchange and the blending of Indo-Islamic architectural styles. Consolidation and expansion 1310 CE to 1527 CE Under rules like Allahuddin Khilji and Malik Kafur, Muslim domination spread across Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, effectively covering most of India except for religions like Orissa and Assam. This expansion led to diverse cultural interactions and the emergence of new socio-economic structures in different regions. Transition and Revival 1527 CE to 1857 CE The Mughal dynasty, starting with Babur in 1527, ushered in a new era of governance through regional powers like the Marathas and the Sikh contested their rule. By the 18th century, the British presence started to eclipse the Mughal influence, leading to the formal end of Muslim rule post the 1857 uprising. 
The period also saw significant development in art, literature, and administration under Mughal patronage. Cultural and social impacts. Muslim rule brought profound changes, including the eclipse of Buddhism due to the destruction of monasteries, clashes between Hindu and Muslim nobilities, for economic and social dominance, and brief revival of practice like domestic slavery under the Delhi Sultanate. The fusion of Persian, Central Asian, and Indian cultures resulted in the rich Indo-Islamic cultural heritage visible in architecture, music, and cuisines. Hindu resistance and survival. Despite the challenges, Hindu kingdoms like Vijayanagar in the south and resilient leaders like Rana Sangha, Prithviraj Chauhan, and Maharana Pratap in the northern stood as a symbol of resistance and preservation of Hindu traditions. The synthesis of diverse cultural elements during this period laid the foundation for India's vibrant, pluralistic society. The Muslim rule in India was marked by both conflict and coexistence, leaving behind a complex legacy that shaped India's social, economic, and cultural landscapes. Today, India stands as a testament to the amalgamation of diverse cultural influences, reflecting a rich tapestry of traditions and histories. Understanding these historical dynamics help us appreciate the complexities of India's past and present. As we reflect on these historical chapters, it's crucial to appreciate the resilience of India's diverse cultural heritage. Share your thoughts on how historical events continue to influence modern India in the comments below. Explore more about these periods in Indian history to deepen your understanding of the country's rich past. Solution for your life's problem. Don't wear this one color dress. Click here to watch the video now. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more historical insights. Thanks for watching. Pranam.